Being a parent today is a massive financial burden that puts a lot of strain on families, particularly when children want things that parents simply can't afford to give them. With the current financial state of the world, it's more important than ever to teach children how to deal with money. And with us in studio today to discuss the importance of educating your children about the value of money is creative parenting expert and best-selling author, Nikki Bush. Nikki, I'm so happy that we're talking about this this morning because this whole thing about financial intelligence is something that I wish I had learned at an early age. So what happens when children want luxuries that their parents can't afford? How does the parent deal with it and what do they need to do? Firstly, we need to teach our children the value of money. Mm -hmm. And today our children are asking for very expensive devices. Yep. And they need to have them in order to be cool and fit in with the crowd. Yeah. So parents are feeling quite compelled to go out and buy their children mm -hmm. these, these gadgets and devices. So it really is important that children learn mm -hmm. that they can't necessarily have everything they want straight away. Yes. Sometimes they need to wait, and if it's an expensive item, they might need to wait a few months for their birthday yeah. so that everybody clubs in and instead of giving yeah. them a gift, gives them money, which they then put towards mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they've been saving up themselves yeah. and they can then contribute. Mm -hmm. And when children put some of their own money into something, they value it so much more. So true. They're more inclined to look after it as well, and that's important. And I think when it comes to high value items, big ticket items, we need to have a breakage and loss policy really? in our homes as well. Yeah. It's too easy to just go out and buy a new one yeah. if they lose their cell phone, for example. And in our home, my youngest son got his cell phone at about 12 and a half years of age, yeah. and he very quickly lost it. Okay. Fortunately, it wasn't a very high value one at that right. stage, certainly not an internet linked smartphone. And what was quite interesting was he knew he had to buy a new one by mm. himself with his own money because that was our family policy. If you lose it, if you break it, if you drop it, if, you know, you're responsible for it. He'd been saving up for a tablet yes. and he had to redirect his savings yeah. into buying himself a new cell phone. Wow. So he felt the pain of it. And yeah. I think if children don't feel a little bit of mm. that responsibility, they don't take responsibility. Yes. So that's important. That is such a fantastic um, example that you gave us and, and one that actually is very new to me because I don't know many young people <laughs> that are that responsible. You know, most of the time we lose something and parents quickly replace yeah. it because they have that guilt of not being able to give their children whatever it is that they want. And we can't necessarily afford it. Yes. So even if you have to deduct off their pocket money, so buy it up front because you need to connect with your child if mm. they need a phone, but then they have to have a deduction yeah. off their pocket money. Yeah. Uh, and, and then, you know, they get that sense of, of responsibility once mm. again. But children are amazing how they bring money lessons to the table and yes. sometimes we ignore them. Really? My eldest was eight when he brought a really good teachable moment to the table that I actually ignored, which was jolly stupid. Mm. And he said to me, Mum, when you're buying milk, you should really buy sachets of milk, wow. those plastic packets, rather yes. than a bottle. Yeah. Because you can save three or four rand per litre. Oh, wow. Now, I did the sums the other day. He's now 18. If I had taken his advice, and if I had, say, put 1,000 rand into a savings account for him, an investment savings account at the yes. time, uh, that grew at, say, 8% mm. um, interest rate. And then if I had taken, add a monthly amount, because if we say we're using three litres of milk a week, that yeah. landed up being three, nearly 10 rand a week yes. times four weeks, call it 40 rand a month. Yes. If I'd invested 40 rand a month for 10 years mm. at 8%, he would have had about nine and a half thousand rand wow. in that account by the time he turned 18. If he just put it in yes. a savings account that wasn't growing, yeah. um, or put it under his mattress in a piggy, mm. piggy bank, mm. then he would have only had about four and a half thousand rand wow. by the end of that period. So yes. it just shows you, mm. we need to teach our children how compound interest yes. works. Because compound interest is what creates wealth. Yeah. When we say money makes money, that's what we're talking yeah, about, yeah. is actually sitting on your money in an interest-bearing account so mm. that it grows without you having yeah. to do much, but you just got to keep putting in a little bit every now and again. This is incredible. Yeah, yeah and it teaches, it teaches our children responsibility as well. So what are some tips that parents can teach their children about money and how to deal with responsibility just to end off with? Okay. Firstly, they need to learn that waiting is good. Yes. Okay. So they don't have to buy it now, and sometimes children are fickle. They want one thing today, but they want a different thing tomorrow. Yeah. If they say they want to go and buy something from the toy store today, 
make them wait a few days or a week. You might find by the weekend it's changed. Exactly. So they don't what do even they want to really want? <laughs> yes. What do they really want? Yeah. Well, they're just trying to be cool. Um, secondly, get them to spend their own money. So they must participate with some of their own savings for what they want to buy. Whether it's a toy or whether it's a piece of technology, I think they need to invest themselves. And thirdly, they need to learn how to keep some money aside to purchase, some money aside to save, and some money aside to invest in order to create wealth. So three piggy banks is quite a good idea. Fantastic. I am taking mental notes all the way. Nikki, thank you so much for joining us and for this very important topic about financial intelligence and how to work with money. I think any child that learns it at a young age is going to be successful in their lives. Thank wow. you, Leanne. I love it. Well, financial intelligence is not learnt in a vacuum. T children need us to show them how to deal with money in a responsible way so that it doesn't control their lives. It could be one of the most important lessons you ever teach your child.